Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video we want to test the Sierra CT440 horn tweeter. And so I have the tweeter here and you can just take a look at it. The customer has uh, put these wires on the end here. Now it uses a neodymium magnet and an aluminum nickel plated uh, horn flare with the aluminum uh, bullet style. Now the diaphragm is material or is mylar. And so um, what I'm going to do in this video is just do some objective test data as well as my subjective listening impressions on this tweeter. So um, just to clarify, I've, I have no commercial affiliation with this and uh, the customer had sent me these just out of uh, his own curiosity on how they measure and perform. Okay, so the, the tweeter retails for 171 Canadian. Um, that's 131 euro at the time of this video, which is 2022. Um, so looking at the physical features of the driver, it has a square bezel, like a, um, and then it allows for close driver spacing to other, to other drivers. Now, um, I had to flush mount this just to make sure I'm getting the best possible measurement. So I CNC machined out of a uh, circular piece of Baltic birch plywood. I pocketed out for the flange and then I also beveled the outside perimeter of the of the circular shape just to reduce any potential diffraction that might uh, be introduced into my measurements. And so you can see here the magnet kind of, I had to kind of uh, twist the driver through, um, put it on an angle when I was mounting the driver to the baffle just to clear the terminals at the back but uh, otherwise it was uh, pretty easy mounting of the driver and so um, if we look at first the impedance sweep on the driver you can see that the uh, fundamental mechanical resonance is at around 1.6 kilohertz and then I've just zoomed in here to show how the driver behaves in the upper treble and so you can see that it actually is very clean uh, starting from about two kilohertz it has a, a reasonable impedance sweep and then um, we're devoid of any mechanical breakup until around 16 17 kilohertz and what we do see is pretty mild so um, now looking at the frequency response you can see that output starts at around 1.5 kilohertz and then by uh, three kilohertz we're, we're in a region of the driver that's relatively flat and so um, when we look back at the publication sheet here care is saying that they recommend a crossover as low as two two kilohertz okay so that's um that would be reasonable um in my mind on what you can expect from this driver now if we compare my response graph to theirs um, you can see that it does actually uh, follow theirs quite closely and so kudos to sierra for uh, publishing data that's uh, pretty accurate now they have applied uh, some smoothing um, but they are using a 50 dB vertical scale. Another thing worth noting too is that the uh, impedance sweep is nearly identical uh, to mine. You can see here um, that they have their mechanical resonance at the same part. They have this small bump at 5k and then their breakup mode is at the same spot. So they haven't smoothed this at all and it's actually giving us valuable information uh, from the from the data sheet. And so um, great, great to see that from a manufacturer. So um, we looked at the off-axis behavior of the driver and uh, due to a software limitation within ARTA, it's actually quite difficult uh, to create a, a normalized off-axis polar plot um, when you're dealing with just treble frequencies. For some reason, the software uh, really freaks out when you try to uh, normalize uh, uh, the data when there's no response in the one kilohertz or lower region. And so what I had to do is just uh, display the response with it without it being normalized. So what that means is that the on-axis resp on response, you can see that it's turning uh, higher output uh, in the 8K region and then in the upper treble it's down again. But generally we can deduce from this that the coverage pattern is quite narrow, especially in the upper treble. And so we're actually only getting a 40 degree listening window and that's the minus 6 db down point as you move off axis so um, you only have to move 20 degrees off axis with this driver and the output is already down 6 db and so what that means is it's going to be very directional um, in the upper treble and so um, 
the other good thing, <laughs> it's not a good thing, but another aspect of this driver that kind of redeems it somewhat is that uh, the off axis is well behaved. So you can see here that I'm showing on axis green, 15 degrees blue, 30 degrees is the purple. And so you can see that the behavior is consistent uh, relative to the on axis uh, frequency response. And so um, we do notice as well though that at 30 degrees off axis, we can see that by 10 kilohertz, the driver has fallen quite substantially in output. And so just if you're not aware, um, the directional behavior is largely attributable to the large um, bullet in the front of the driver. And so the uh, horn's directional characteristics is mainly determined by the overall size of the horn, but mainly uh, the throat diameter. And because we have this large bullet, it's causing uh, the directional behavior. Um, if that bullet was smaller, say, for example, half an inch, um, it would actually have relatively decent, uh, de decently wide off axis coverage. However, because the bullet um, here, if I had to guess, the, the bullet diameter is probably around 35, 40 millimeters millimeters in diameter or about an inch and a quarter inch and three eighths in diameter then that's uh, why we're seeing that directional behavior okay so um, next I look at the time domain performance which we I first looked at burst decay um, this is a good result there's nothing wrong uh, with what we're seeing here and if we look at the waterfall as well um, it's 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 very good um, not excellent but I would say ac acceptable Okay, step response, we can see if I've limited, uh, changed my uh, time scale to a two millisecond division, you can see that this driver has a very good transient response, very fast uh, rise and fall, uh, very well behaved with the step response. So this is indicating that there aren't any uh, serious issues in the time domain with the initial uh, impulse of the driver. Looking at distortion and the nonlinear behavior, um, so this driver achieves a minus 65 dB quite easily, even at a, a higher output SPL of 90 dB. And so as we increase the output, um, you can see down here in my graph, I've ind indicated what test SPL we're at. So we, has, we increase from 85 dB up to 90 and then up to 95 and I even go up to 100 dB. You can, you can see here that the distortion performance is still uh, very good and that we still have around a 55 dB, uh, minus 55 dB uh, distortion performance, which is, which is really good. And I attribute that to the large diaphragm area of this driver. And so we do have some trade-offs that we're take that are taking place here. We have a large diaphragm area, and so it's unavoidable that you're going to get some directionality in the upper treble, but you also get very low distortion, high sensitivity, um, which I didn't cover, but it is very high at 110 uh, dB at one watt with a very very easy load. Um, I think it's about 8.6 is the lowest point. 8.6 ohm is the lowest point on my impedance sweep. So. Um, subjective listening on this, um, I found it to be on par with some of the other offerings from, for example, Fostex with the T96A. The driver sounds very clean, um, very neutral, has good transient detail. Um, now, it's worth noting too that the directional characteristic, it limits the overall sound stage width that were, that's available from this tweeter. And so this may work for you, it may not, it's just something to be, a, to be aware of. Um, the, the, off-axis polar map is very similar to what you would get with, for example, a six and a half or an eight inch full range. And so if your room is very lively, it has some difficult room acoustics, um, this may be a tweeter for you in the sense that it's gonna direct the sound towards you. You're not gonna get a lot of uh, direct um, early sidewall reflections from the floor and also from the ceiling. And so if you're wanting the utmost clarity and you have a dedicated listening position in your room, then this might be a good uh, solution for you. Um, and it will have the same uh, transient characteristics as a full range driver. And so I would suggest just trying it. Um, they're not extremely expensive, but it uh, might be an, a viable alternative to some of the more costlier options from, from for example, Fostex. So uh, that's it for today. Take care and have a great day.